You have heard that it was said to the men of old, You shall not kill, and whoever kills shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother shall be liable to judgment. A lot going on here, but notice that. You have heard it said, and then he quotes Moses, But I say, that would have been a really curious thing to hear in the first century. Wait, what? <laughs> Did did you just say what I think you just said? Did you just suggest that you have more authority than Moses? Yep. Yep. <laughs> he did. He did just do that. He says, you heard Moses say this, but I say to you. What is Jesus doing here? Jesus assumes he has greater authority than Moses, who teaches with the greatest authority in the Old Covenant. So that should tell you, Jesus sees himself as a new Moses, a new lawgiver, a new one who is at Mount Sinai, who speaks to the children of Israel and gives them the laws of God and judges them and interprets the law of God. It's, uh, it's not something that goes unnoticed. Matthew 7, 20, 28 through 29, the people notice this. It says, And when Jesus finished these sayings, the crowds were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one who had authority, not as their scribes. He taught them as one who has authority to institute new laws and to exceed the authority of Moses. The, scroll, the scribes and the Pharisees, those who, those who sit in the seat of Moses, they only have the authority to interpret and expound on what Moses gave they're not greater than Moses they don't have that kind of authority they sit in the seat of Moses they are not greater than Moses Jesus is clearly showing people he's greater than Moses he's not just regurgitating what Moses said no 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 he exceeds it he is not only the fulfillment of it uh, but he speaks with a greater authority than even of Moses. Hmm. Might this be the prophet that Moses spoke about? A prophet like me? Well, I'll let you determine that. If you uh, look at the next slide there, it speaks about the son of David. He will be great and will be called the son of the most high, Luke 1, 32 through 33 says. And it's in reference of Jesus contextually. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. You hear that? And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. Does that sound familiar to you? We had just read about the house of David. And we saw that it would endure forever. But it's hard to say that it endures forever in Solomon. Might this be the one that it endures forever in? Perhaps? According to the biblical author, yes. <laughs> According to the biblical author, quite plainly, he tells you. Um, yeah, this Jesus that the angel is announcing. Yeah, he's going to sit on the throne of David. And um, he's going to rule over the house of Jacob. And his kingdom will have no end. <laughs> okay. Clearly a fulfillment of uh, what we see in 2 Samuel. Important, 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 because it shows us the biblical roots of Christ's teaching authority. Right? It's continuation. Um, yes, he exceeds Moses' authority. He exceeds David's, David's authority. But it's a continuation of these things. Um, it's in continuity with them if you will. So Jesus is the Son of God who sits on the throne. He is the one in whom the promise of an everlasting throne of David has been fulfilled. Praise God. Now, let's briefly speak about a priest according to the order of Melchizedek.